Hello, welcome to today's HR huddle. Uh, with me is my partner, Jennifer Wilson, and we have a guest also, Trisha Duncan, who is Director of Operations and Partner at Jones and Roth in Oregon. And uh, we are excited to have her come talk to us about career pathing and some unique things she's doing. Um, but before we kind of get into the topic, Trisha, maybe you want to, uh, by way of introduction, just you know, say a few things about you and your firm. That would be great. Sure. So thanks again for having me. I'm always happy to talk, talk about this topic. So I've been with uh, Jones and Roth for almost 30 years, so a long time. Um, we've been around for about 75 plus years and we're, we have three offices in Oregon and we're about 115 people. Um, I started as a very traditional staff accountant. I worked in a variety of our niches and service areas. Um, I had kids. I worked on a lot of flex schedules and a lot of different arrangements over the course of my career. And the, the last half has been more internally focused on operations, a lot of people development, recruiting, team development, strategic planning. So I do very little for clients anymore. And it's not accounting or taxes. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's so great. And I know that uh, Jones and Roth, you know, we've been working with you guys and know, known you for many years. And we know you've also been, you know, pioneers in flex and everything flex. And um, you've personally, you know, like you were sharing, pioneered some things. Um, and one of the things that, you know, struck us and Jennifer heard you at the recent conference, you know, was how you're structuring and communicating the flexible career paths at mm -hmm. Jones and Roth. And we just thought that was, you know, fascinating how you've been able to put words to it and be able to convey it both externally and internally. And mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, everything firm we probably talked to says we are flexible, like it's a checkbox, <laughs> right? But we're not really able to convey, you know, what that means or what that looks like so people can see it and map it to their life. And I think that's right. where you guys have really taken it. Right. So, um, you know, maybe I don't know if there's something, you know, big picture to address or talk about, you know, what what prompted you to do that? How did you, you know, get, you know, start to define it? Like, you know, where did you where did you go to really start to, you know, put that together, pull that together both internally mm -hmm. and externally? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm very lucky to have landed at Jones and Roth. The flex life and all this um, flexibility in the career path was not something I was even on top of my mind when I was recruiting. Um, so I was lucky to join a firm that had already been doing that. So when I started almost 30 years ago, we had a man who was a manager that worked a reduced schedule. And we had one of the only two women partners in the state of Oregon, and she had started as a payroll clerk. And so I think I, I those guys before me, they were all white men <laughs> that were around for a long time, but they valued each person as an individual. And they had demonstrated well before I got there that we need to figure out how to make work function with people's lives. And so the foundation was set. So I think for a lot of us, for a lot of years, we we're just like, well, isn't this normal? Isn't this how it works? And over the last maybe five or six years as recruiting has gotten continually more intense and it's harder to keep people, a few of us realized, you know, we talk about this all the time, but it's not really tangible for people who haven't lived it. And so we, we need to find a way to put some structure and framework around it so people can understand how they could apply this to their life. Um, so last couple years spent a lot more time in that and put together internally a career um, pathing uh, model with coaches and guides helping. So a lot of training with them, um, but really outlining three main paths. One is a classic path that's pr very traditional and anything else is unique. So whether it's a fast path, so a faster track to progression or a flex path, which maybe has a little slower um, those are all unique. There's no check the box. There is no you fit into this. Um, those of us that lived it knew that we can't create a program. It needs to be individualized to that person. Um, so that's kind of where we started. That's great. Mm -hmm. Questions yeah. on that? Jen, do you have a question? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, so, I mean, I love that. And I love the idea of a, a, a traditional path, although I know most people that know me don't no, I don't like that word traditional, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the um, normal path, that's not a good word either, but that trip, that path. And then uh, I love the fast path idea. So I want you to tell us more about that for sure. 
Sure. And then maybe uh, examples of the flexible path. I think most of us probably are more familiar with that these days, mm -hmm. um, you know, than the fast path, maybe. So mm -hmm. maybe start there. Yeah. Well, and I have to say the marketing department helped a ton because we had a hard time coming up with that traditional. And so classic path sounded better than traditional path to us. Too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, the fast path is just, and I think we've had people doing that too. It's someone that wants to move quicker and they're happy to work a ton of hours and put a lot of commitment into their career. And that's the focus their family has for that person. And so it's usually more responsibility, um, generally more hours, right? They want to learn something or move through quickly, but it's a more targeted plan around that versus I'm just here more right? What are you doing more? What are you trying to accomplish? Where are you trying to go? What skills do you need to learn? Um, so maybe they're going to specific training or um, getting more responsibility than they normally would at that level with some coaching and uh, mentoring around that. So it's at where we have found that kind of pop up more is maybe somebody wanted to be a partner really fast or they want, I should be a senior manager. And there maybe were some coaching tips in there that they needed to work on. So putting that in writing with formal expectations and a commitment to both of us helps both feel comfortable they're heading the right direction and it's not so vague, right? So yeah. it's easy to be like, you're not ready to be a partner, but what do you need to do to get there? So right. I, that's where a lot of the fast path will go. At the staff level, it's generally more hours, more um, projects, how do you, you know, you just got to learn, you got to get over that steep learning curve. But then as it settles down, it's more, it's usually more responsibility in some way. And then the flex path, um, it could be a reduced hours year round, it could be seasonal, it could be, um, I'm trying to figure things out in my life outside of work, and I just need to slow down for a little while. So it's just a slower pace. Um, which could be less hours or not. So mm -hmm. it, it, again, it's really dependent on people. We've had people do that for um, maybe they were not a professional athlete, but they were like right under there and the, generally runners and wanted to really commit to some, you know, see what they could do. And so I'm going to reduce some hours. I'm not going to work crazy busy season hours so I can see what I can do outside of work. Um, so it, it's kind of anything. We try to really focus on it. It doesn't, there's no right way to do this and there's no right reason. So if someone wants to do it for a personal reason that isn't around kids or parents or, you know, the traditional ones that you hear about, it's okay. Right. Like they know themselves and what they're trying to accomplish. Right. Yeah. When it sounds like you have on, on ramps and off ramps and like we can, you know, take a different ramp at different periods right. and it could be temporary. It could be you know, um, and you, I think you were saying, you know, when we were visiting, you meet annually with mm -hmm. your team to determine what that is. You want to say more about that? Sure. So annually they put together. So they're working on it now. What's their plan for the upcoming year? And they kind of go through the career path model. Which path are you on? Which niches are you interested? Where do you want to focus your time? Um, how how do you want to use your non-chargeable time? So we try to get a little deliberate. And is that non-charged time helping you achieve your goals? Um, so they do that annually and then they're meeting with their coaching guide throughout the year to make sure they're still on track. But that's a formal place where they can say, nope, I need to have some discussions about doing something differently. Um, so they present that with their coaching guide and we work through it. So if it's simple, it's easy. Um, we say yes. If it's more complicated, maybe they're in a niche where they're asking to work a lot less during a time that is really busy. We have to have discussions. So we typically look at, does it work for the employee? Does it work for the firm? And then does it work for the clients that they choose to work with? And if we can say yes to all those, then it's a no brainer. If we have, we might have to negotiate a little bit if that doesn't work, right? So my simplest example is we work with a lot of dentists who are all around the country. They tend to not work on Fridays, which means that's when they like to meet with us. So if somebody wanted a flex schedule with Fridays off, they probably shouldn't work in the dental niche, right? So they're not all that black and white, but I think- Not easy. Right. <laughs> you've got to have the conversations. I think that's the biggest thing. You've got to be willing to have the real conversations about what does this mean? How does this impact the firm, the clients, you? 
How do we work through the hard stuff? What are we going to do if it doesn't work out? Like you have to have the willingness to have those ongoing conversations or it won't work. Right. Well, and it's messy, right? I mean, yeah. it's, um, it'd be so awesome if it were super clean and you could structure it into a, uh, three programs under the, the right. flex path or whatever. And the truth of it is, is that that's not how it works almost ever. And I right. love that you're talking about, you know, allowing uh, the messiness because that's real. So that means that you're probably getting a, a more authentic version of your people all the time and a, and a more right. transparent version of your people, which mm -hmm. is got to be great. And then um, talking about what the firm needs and the clients need in addition to what the talent needs, because that's, it is, it's got to be win, win, win. And right. um, I think a lot of firms, they're so focused on what the firm needs that they won't listen to the, uh, the rest mm -hmm. or worried about what the client will think right. without really... Mm -hmm allowing for the fact that not, the clients are not all the same. Right. Um, you know, so that's kind of interesting to me when I listen to your, um, your approach. The other piece of it that I really like, and I just want to underscore that you said is, you know, then we put it in writing and we're really clear about the expectations and, right. and we talk about, um, you know, what we've agreed to mm -hmm. and sort of what um, you have to do to stay on the fast path or what you have to, do or not not do uh, to stay on the flex path. I love that because we, we always say if it's not a writing, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of our, you know, the, we're just totally advocates of the written recap and then regularly checking back in. It sounds like mm -hmm. you're doing that with their, right. um, their coach. So it sounds super in terms of expectations. And that's, I think that's where flexible pathways fall apart. Mm -hmm as expectations. Right, yeah. definitely. And I think, I, you know, we had some people years ago that did it well, and it was all about being very clear on expectations, communicating proactively, following through on what you agreed to or talking about it if you can't. And so I, I, again, I feel really lucky to be in this firm where that's just part of the culture because it, it doesn't feel intense or stressful. It's just matter of fact, here's where we are. Here's what you're looking for. Here's what the firm needs. Let's figure it out. Right. So there's not as much emotion. There's emotions that pop up. But generally, it's just this is just the way we operate. It's not something new or unique or something to be stressed about. Um, I will say from the administrative side, it's a lot of work. There's a lot. Yeah. It, it's messy. Yes. And scheduling and figuring out how, you know, how does this work um, all together can be difficult. But uh, the retention's better. You get and it, it opens, as we've laid language around it, it just opens the ability to have dialogue in a different way that doesn't feel so performance-based or, you know, it's more like, hey, you know, you're having trouble meeting your charge hour budget. Maybe we just need to reset. Maybe yeah. this schedule isn't working for you and it doesn't feel as much like you're not doing this, you're in trouble as, hey, maybe we're in the wrong path. Well, and it sounds like you're super transparent about it also. Right. And I think that makes a huge difference. So you're approachable. You know, if I want to customize something, I can come talk to my coach or you or, you know, who, a right. partner, whoever else, you know, about mm -hmm. it. And that makes a huge difference. Right. Um, and you're really promoting this from a recruiting perspective to interns and new staff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure experienced higher recruiting, too, but it feels like and you can speak to this. You know what? How are you using this in recruiting? And, you know, how is that doing You know, from attracting people? How are people responding, You know, especially that next gen? Right. I mean, I think we've gotten really good responses. Um, I'm sure a lot of firms have found that sometimes uh, the students will say they want something, but they still choose something else. So yes. that that part's interesting. So for me, I've always had kind of the long haul on the recruiting view that if we do the right things and give the right information, at some point they might come back. And we've had quite a few rebounders that have popped back. They remember some of this stuff. Um, but I think it helps us narrow down people who might be a good fit. Like we're, we're not a firm that tells you what to do. So I know that students coming in that want someone to just give them, here's the next step for you. They're probably not going to do well here. So it does help narrow down, I think, our applicant pool, which maybe it's a little smaller pool, but it's more qualified pool for us. Um, I think the, the students have, they like the idea of it, but they 
even with the context we give them, they don't really understand right. enough to know why this might be really useful down the road, but maybe they'll come back, you know, three, four years after yeah. my daughter works for a big firm. And so she's already, you know, three years in going, oh, your work, your seniors are working this much and I'm working a lot more. And so I think it, for me, it's giving that longer term perspective so that we, we see the results later. And on the experience recruiting, I think we get a lot of candidates that are looking for something different than a um, very set in stone path. So that goes over pretty well. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, and I want, I'm wondering about, you know, what kind of coaching and training are you providing your coaches? Yeah. So we, we make them do formal training before they're able to be a coach or guide. Um, and then we have every quarter, we have a group meeting of all. So we do kind of the staff and senior coaches together and then the managers and above coaches together where we were bringing up, Hey, here are some things maybe you should be talking about in their, um, their training. They get some potential agenda items throughout the course of the year, right? Like these are yeah. gearing up for busy season, start talking to people about how they're going to manage the workload and their schedule. Um, but then we meet together so that they can bring up, you know, sort of confidentially, hey, I'm struggling. I don't know how to address this question. Or we can talk through what the intention is or those sorts of things. So I think that's helped a lot. Um, so we started with a smaller group and then we've added people as we got more nice. people comfortable. Nice. Yeah. And they're just used to it. Like you said, it's who you are is it's one size fits one. Right. We, you know, say people management, mm -hmm. people development has to be one size fits one. Right. Yeah. Um, and it takes more time and it's messy. But then the benefits, like you said, are the, you know, increased retention and satisfaction yeah. and rebounding. Well, I think another big benefit they don't see a lot of competition with each other, right? Mm. Because you don't know. I mean, we don't announce everybody's career path. They share it usually, but they don't always know what their peers' career path is. So they're not, they don't feel like they're fighting for a spot because everyone's kind of going their own yeah. speed, nice. which has been an unintended, you know, benefit. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And that we don't have to promote people in lockstep. Right. Because this group of interns came in or this, you know, these mm -hmm. seniors, I don't have to promote people in lockstep. I can customize right. it to what, when they're ready, what they want, their timing, what right. the firm needs, what the clients needs, like you mm -hmm. said. Um, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I will say that one of the challenges for the coaches and guides is we, we talk a lot about, you can share your experiences, but don't assume that the other person has that ex same experience. So for some of those really ambitious partners, they have a hard time understanding why someone might not want to be promoted. <laughs> and so some of those things like you value that, but they don't value that there's constant, you know, we have to constantly be reminding. And yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, that's one of the most painful parts of leading and managing is mm -hmm realizing all of your preferences and all of your mm -hmm. uh, desires and motivators and, you know, your communication preferences and all of that, that only a small percentage of the population shares them. Right. And they probably aren't the people working for you. Right. <laughs> so right. They're, they're our clients even, they're all mm -hmm. motivated differently. They all want to communicate differently. They all, right. they, and, and everybody's, um, at a different stage, the other huge detail is, you know, the generational gaps mm -hmm. that happen, um, you know, even between millennials and Gen Z right now, um, just, you know, different motivators. And so right. I love that, Tricia, that you're including that as part of the regular messaging, just to mm -hmm. remind everybody, your path was your path, but right. it's not the path that everyone else is going to choose. Mm -hmm. They may, some may follow similar paths, but everybody's got their own pathway. Right. I think that's the coolest part about what I heard, you know, when you first shared this program with me was just this idea that it, you know, we're trying, everybody wants like a, a lattice or a ladder or, a, you know, this very significant structure of paths and, um, and it just doesn't provide the flexibility needed. Mm -hmm. Now, I, one thought I had, I wondered, do people, can, can I start on a fast path and pull back to a classic path? Or, you know, can I move from uh, the flex path to a 
classic or fast path when my circumstances change? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, I think we don't do that like every month, right? Yeah, like if there's, if there's a big life, it's kind of like health insurers. If there's a big yeah. life change, we're going to address it, right? So yes. lots of babies, lots of new parents. And so usually that prompts a, hey, what does, what does that mean for you when you come back? Um, but yeah, we have people, I'm a good example of that where flex path for a lot of years and then started coming back and then shifted maybe to different niches or service areas or um, we have a lot of people that explore and a handful that like find their path and stick on it so it's not just the for us it's not just the are you fast or flex or classic but it's yes. like which industry niches are you working with with type of clients where are you focusing your time are you more people development oriented or uh, bringing in new clients? Or are you going to be a more technical resource? Are you going to combine those skills? Or So it's kind of, we've got um, questions along the way of where do you kind of fit in what interests you in these different sections of their career path. So that's great. Yeah. Awesome. I love every bit of that. And I just, um, it requires an unselfish management approach. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I'm not going to hoard my person in my mm -hmm. niche because it's better for me because I can leverage them. Right. Instead, if they want to go explore other things, we're going to encourage them. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And we have to work on that. You know, so <laughs> yes, we probably have to remind ourselves. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I think in general, <laughs> all the partners believe in what we're trying yes. to do. It's just in that moment. It's oh, like yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. But that's the higher calling, right? That's right. the intention. That's right. That's what I'm, you know, impressed with the generosity of that intention. Right. I realize in practice all this is yes, right. Difficult, challenging, messy, but uh, worth it. Right. Yeah. Are there, as we wrap up, Trisha, is there any like tips for anybody that is wanting to pull this together and really have it be one size fits one and this kind of flexibility and getting buy-in, you know, across the partners and have it being culturated? Is there any like tips or lessons or place to start that you would offer? Well, again, I was lucky to come into a firm that had that built in. So, so there wasn't a huge fight. It was more organizing around okay. it. Okay. <laughs> we're like third or fourth generation, our partners now. So we've all had the benefit of it. Um, but I think I wouldn't roll it out formally like we just did with documents that if you can't live it so like we had a lot of partner conversations about if we're going to actually do this and say we do it publicly you all have to buy in so the buy-in is important but i think the key is if you've got one or two really good employees that want to do something different help them be successful so you can get some good successes under your belt so other people will see that and trust that oh we can do it yeah. it can be done well and if someone doesn't do something doesn't do it well, you need to nip it in the bud quickly. Um, and so that you don't want the bad example out there for too long. Well, and people, you need people to see that also that you're willing right. to handle it when it doesn't. I mean, yeah. that actually builds respect and credit credibility when you do right. that. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I think it's the way the industry is going and it's going to continue yes. going this way. So the more you can start moving that direction, the better. Um, and I think we find the more people start getting able to work in the way they want to work, they end up producing more or coming back. Like we've had several people that we thought were kind of on a flex path for a while. And they're like, nope, I'm ready to come back. I'm excited. I re-energized. I want to come back, you That's know, fast path it now. So I think the more they get out of it and feel heard and, and taken care of, the more we get back to. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Great advice. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story and sharing the firm's story. And um, we are super proud of you and, you know, the making it real, like you said, living it mm -hmm. and uh, your partner team. And it, it does take work and it does take maybe reminding ourselves or each other, you know, why are we doing this and the importance of it, um, that greater good that Jen was talking about. So we appreciate you. We oh, appreciate well, you. your time and your gener generous sharing. So thank you very much. And uh, we will see everybody else for next week's HR Huddle. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today.